All right, hello and welcome to what is actually the first Expert Insight interview of 2019. Can you believe it? And I'm delighted uh, for this to be joined by Robin Dreek. How are you doing, Robin? I'm doing great. And yeah, you know, I hadn't thought about that either. But yeah, the first one in 2019, it's a great way to kick off the year. It's excellent. And where are you, uh, where are you today, Robin? Uh, where I live in home base out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. So uh, decent weather. <laughs> Love it. And I'm here in San Diego, but I know Virginia very well as I lived in Vienna, Virginia for a time. So uh, yes, great. great north. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, Robin, you're a 28 year veteran of the of federal service, the United, uh, the, the United States Naval Academy, Marine Corps, FBI, and you were in counter counterintelligence for a long time, right? Yeah. Um, matter of fact, uh, by the time I retired a couple months ago, uh, 30 plus years total. So yes, long time federal service. And so I'm glad I'm not being affected by the shutdown right now, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, working in counterintelligence and all of that, you know, gave you a huge insight into trust building because basically you can't get, you probably can't get a more extreme example of where you need to build trust and where trust is, you know, a, a, a come out, you know, a very uh, uh, hard thing, as I said, to build, and a thing that people um, probably, you know, their levels of mistrust are at their highest. So Absolutely. this, so obviously, doing this, you you wrote the book, the the code of trust. Um, so tell me a bit about you know the genesis of writing that book, and you know why you think trust is such a, a an incredibly important thing for for business. Sure, absolutely. Um, and you couldn't be more right. The, you know, being federal law enforcement in the FBI, you know, you kind of ingrained, especially, you know, you say my background, I'm that very typical type A hard charger kind of guy. And, uh, and in law enforcement, in typical criminal activities, that's a great way to be and it's going to be very productive for you, yeah. uh, as most people can attest. But when you actually work in the world of counterintelligence, where my job was to recruit foreign spies, basically, and the people around them um, to hopefully align their their priorities with ours and help serve the United States. Um, if you take that hard charger type A attitude, you're going to fail majestically. <laughs> um, I had to learn very quickly and thank, and, and thank goodness I had some fantastic mentors and guides when I first arrived in New York that really had this art form of interpersonal communication down. Uh -huh. And because of them, you know, I, I got better at this. I got on our behavioral team. I ran our behavioral teams for a number of years. And so the really the basis of coming up with understanding that where the book came from, the code of trust was um, literally back in 2013. You know, I've been teaching and writing about this for a number of years, but uh, I was asked to do another article on counterintelligence. And what they wanted me to do was um, write an article about what my team does. And I, I never really took a step back and thought about when I was doing behavioral assessments um, for counterintelligence investigations, what I was doing, and, mm -hmm. and I quickly found out what I was doing is I was strategizing trust, very genuine, honest, um, no deception, no subterfuge trust. In other words, I was strategizing how do you create a healthy relationship? Right. And as I gave labels and meanings to that for work, I started recognizing it everywhere, and that's where all this was born from. And so your book is based, you have it based on on five distinct uh, principles, right? Um, the first of which is suspend your ego. And as you said, I mean, you were a type A, you are a type A personality. And a lot of people in business and leadership are type A personalities. So suspending ego, that's quite a challenge, right? It is quite a challenge. Um, but the core of that, the reason why we need to do that is because Every human being is seeking to be valued and affiliated by others because we're genetically coded to want to belong and be valued by others. Mm -hmm. uh, ancient tribal man says this. Um, and when we suspend our ego, what we're consciously doing is how do I make this conversation about the other person and not about me? Mm -hmm. And so suspending your ego is nothing more than that. And I have four quick little things that you can do to make sure that the conversation is about the other person. One is seek their thoughts and opinions. Two. Talk in terms of their priorities, what's important to them. Three, validate those thoughts and opinions and priorities and who they are as a human being non-judgmentally. And four, give them choices because we give people choices only when we actually value and affiliate with them. So if you build at least one of those four things in everything you say or write, that conversation is completely about them. And that's uh, and that seems to be something that um, you know a lot of people struggle with because you know we're not good listeners, even though we know we should be. We're not 
uh, we're not very good at active listening and that's actually really listening to what the other person is saying because we're always so caught up in what we want to say next um, so I mean obviously those are skills that you have to you you have to learn or you have to consciously uh, adopt those if you want to have these kind if you want to really listen to people right absolutely um, and it's okay that we you know if you do tend to talk more about yourself and can't wait to say your next thing because you know what we all do. Like you said, we're, we are all genetically coded to try to share our thoughts and opinions with others. As a matter of fact, Harvard did a great uh, study back in the spring of 2012 where they discovered that roughly 40 percent of our day we're spending talking in terms of ourselves, mm -hmm. our own priorities. Because what we're doing is we're testing the world around us, our environment, our people. Let me share you what I think and my thoughts and opinions and you accept me for who I am. And if you do, my dopamine's flowing in my brain, there's serotonin, oxytocin, all the pleasure centers are firing when you accept me for my thoughts and opinions. And so the conscious act of not talking about my own thoughts and opinions, yet seeking to understand yours, that takes a little bit of different hardwiring. Mm -hmm. So we can build muscle memory around that, yes. Yeah. And the idea of being non judgmental, because in many ways we live in a in a hyper judgmental mm -hmm. culture today and an outrage culture. It's where people are constantly looking to nitpick every single thing to find out something. You're going to say something eventually that I can get upset about. So yeah. how do, how do the, so the non judgmental thing in this kind of environment is is a hard thing to to execute on, isn't it? It definitely is. Um, you know, without jumping to, you know, one of my other things that I, I love to do, it's called honoring reason. Mm -hmm. um, it's very stoic in, in its approach. And the fact that I'm always thinking in terms of is what I'm about to say or do going to help or hinder where it is I'm trying to get to. Mm -hmm. So I always in order to do that, I have to understand where it is I'm trying to move to. And a lot of times people are focusing on what I call the means goals, the means to the ends, which are mm -hmm. very specific and granular in nature. But if I actually reverse it, I focus on the ends. And in the end, what I'm always, always, always working towards first is a good, healthy relationship. Because if I have a good, healthy relationship, everything happens from there. Right. Because here's the guarantee in life. I guarantee you, everyone listening to your podcast, where they are in life today, their successes and who they are, it did not happen alone. It mm -hmm. happened with good, healthy relationships. And so I honor the healthy relationship first. And so I ask myself, is what I'm about to do or say going to help or hinder a healthy relationship? If it hinders it, I stop. And it's just that honoring reason, cognitively thinking, you know, how do I remove the emotional hijacking of rage, <laughs> or anger, discontentment, resentment out of the equation so I can actually think cause and effect, cause and effect, cause and effect. Yeah, and I, I think that's a super point that people should pick up on there because I do think – we have become such a reactionary culture and the and the problem is that we have the tools for instant reaction right we can get on social media immediately and blast out something or react to something and that idea of actually taking a step back and deciding is this as you said is this going to help or hinder i mean that's a great piece of advice for people yeah and you know it's funny especially in the recent years you know, I, I have 30 years of, of muscle memory about not taking a side, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what this is built around because it, I, here's the guarantee, and you know this in social media, if you take a side, I guarantee you half the world will line up against you and sure. blast you for it. <laughs> you know, so it's about, and so if I just validate you, and validation doesn't mean I, I agree with you necessarily, sure. it means I'm thinking to understand. Mm -hmm. And because people just want to be heard, they just want to be understood. And so I have years of muscle memory of not taking a side, but understanding why it is you think the way you do without judging it. Um, because again, if I'm trying to inspire trust, whether to share information, cooperate, uh, and it, this goes whether it's in business, because I work with a lot of corporations or in counterintelligence or even mm -hmm. in your own family. If I'm judging you, I guarantee you shields it up. People get defensive and there's, there's no one's listening. Yeah. And again, I think that's another point that's worth um, uh, focusing on for a moment. So when you were in when you were in counterintelligence, right, you, you obviously were sometimes dealing with people, um, you know, who obviously had, you know, completely diametrically a opposite views of the world than than you did and yet you had to get behind and find out really who they really were right mm -hmm. and i think and i think that's an interesting so so tell me a little bit about that i mean how 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 did how did that shape your your thinking in the book when you, you when you actually had to dig behind somebody who seems to have very entrenched views or an entrenched worldview you know, I always go to the anchors and bases of all human beings, and I'm always looking for uh, a core principle and priorities of other of other human beings. And here's a core priority of every single human being on this planet. 
We're seeking safety, security, and prosperity for us and our families. That's it. And so when I start from the standpoint of, hey, what are your ideas about safety, security, and prosperity for your family, and how do you want to achieve them? Well, then we start from the end game of healthy relationships and prosperity for ourselves and our family, and we work backwards. Instead of starting with, well, we need to do this, this, and this to move to that, I always start with, well, let's first agree with we want safety, security, and prosperity for us and our families, and, and work backwards and see where we start diverging and see where our overlaps are. Uh, because you, how can you ever judge, you know, people always, I've worked with so many different people and nationalities across the world and I'm not an expert in any of them, but I can always find commonality. Commonality is always, uh, we were, we were all children once. Mm -hmm. Well, we all have favorite, uh, holidays and traditions. We all have uh, memories. We all have, and all these things are about what safety, security, and prosperity of some, at some point in our lives. I find those as our anchor points first, and then we move backwards um, towards the more granular things and then see where we diverge. And it's amazing how when you first form the healthy relationship based on those overlapping priorities of safety, security, and prosperity, you can really accomplish just about anything. Yeah. So so what, you, what you're saying there, and I think it's, uh, again, it's a great uh, takeaway for people um, watching and listening is, is looking for commonalities first rather than focusing on differences. And, yes. and again, like I said, that's the pervasive culture now is, is everybody seems to want to focus on, you know, what we disagree on as opposed to the commonalities. And what you just described is getting down to something that's very, very basic, you know, in family safety, security. It's very basic. And those things are the same whether yeah. you're in work or counter espionage, right? Absolutely. And, you know, I, I work with so many companies and, and whether, you know, they're in sales or, or financial industry. What are the so what's the goal of every company? Well, they're trying to provide a service mm -hmm. for the safety, security and prosperity of their of their customer. Right. You know, and so we start with that. And now we have conversations with them about what kind of service they offer to help them with safety, security, and prosperity for their families. Uh, it, it, that's why when I started doing this, I did everything because I had to interview spies or, or false flags or recruit whatever. Um, and when I gave the labels and meanings behind these things, understands, you know, when there's one of my behavioral team behind these things, mm -hmm. that's when I started saying, wow, there's no difference in anyone you talk to. I mean, you know, strategizing, you know, healthy relationships is the same across everything. I mean, I, I've, I've never... I've never encountered anyone that hasn't had that same thing. Now, granted, you start edging up towards psychopathy and outside the sure. no average human behavior, you know, you do. But in general, um, it's very rare to find someone that doesn't respond and understand that, hey, I'm basically living for the safety and security of my family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and and it just it goes to show like how how simple a premise that is right i mean it's very simple it's it's at the core yes. of who we are but we oh but we tend to layer in and complicate things and look at issues on a much you know higher level as opposed to just getting down to the to our the, emotions tend to do that because uh, we get emotionally hijacked you know I, I i got a couple of credos in my life as i got more mature as i started you know as i got towards retirement mm -hmm. basically to me it's like this if it's getting complicated you're probably doing it the wrong way because <laughs> you know the, the the this way of interacting with other human beings and thinking about the world around you it's what and you just said it yourself just a few seconds ago this is the elusive obvious Mm -hmm. You know, we're all seeking the same exact things. We want to be valued. We want to be affiliated and we want prosperity and safety and security for us and our families. Every service we offer, everything we do in life is centered around that. And, and the greatest thing is we can be very altruistic about that. I do a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. volunteer work here and there because it's all about providing, you know, abundance, you know, because th that's actually sure. one of the other cores of the code of trust is, you know, be be available, be a great resource for others um, with no expectation of reciprocity. In other words, don't do it for self gain, but do it for others because you will trigger in them that that genetic want to actually reciprocate. Yeah, no, and I I, I love that idea, and um, you know, I I love the idea also of simplicity because it is a thing that we're almost, as you said about complicated, we're almost hardwired that to complicate things mm -hmm. and that when we, when when you're presented with a simple idea your first reaction is well it can't be that simple and it often is that simple and that's what yeah. the problem is that we do <laughs> overcomplicate and we don't recognize simplicity um so one of the other yeah, things um, that I, 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 
No, I was going to say that one of the other things you talk about here is is the idea, and you just touched on it there, the idea of of being generous. Um, and I know it's become it's come a byword of you know give without looking to receive and all of that. But often I wonder whether you know people really do embrace it, or they think it's a, well, if I give without expecting to receive, I'm going to receive, right? Yeah, um, and and that's a hard one because people will because I, I call the code of trust flawless mm -hmm. um, because it is a flawless system because um, the the third anchor in my in my code is be an available resource for the prosperity of others. That's that generous part with no expectation of reciprocity. Mm -hmm. That's check and balance that I'm not doing right. it for self gain. Mm -hmm. And now and now a lot of people I, I've heard this you know and, I, and I've experienced this you know that think if you give without expectation of reciprocity you're going to be a carpet to be walked on. Right. No. You're not actually, you know, because when you are generous with your time and resources, you know, if you see someone in need, you have overlapping priorities and you can offer it, you know, don't expect anything in return. You'd be amazed that people do, but you can't expect it. Now, here's the difference. If you keep offering your resources and you're generous and overabundant, if you start creating crazy brain and you start building resentment, well, then you just need to stop because right. that's no longer a healthy relationship for you. Yeah, and that's that's an interesting and and that kind of if you're building resentment, then that obviously you have moved on from not expecting something in return. You are now expecting something. Yes, because that's what builds a resentment. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. It's a, it's a and that's why you know it, the key to this whole thing is that is that crazy brain, as I call it. You know, if I start having um, emotions of anger, discontentment, resentment, frustration, that means I'm doing something wrong. Mm -hmm. I am. I'm I am mismanaging this healthy relationship and I need to do something about it because they're not everyone else around me is just being who they are. Right. It's my effect that uh, I can control. Yeah. And so that's that's and that's that's the easiest part in the world to control. The only thing we control in the world is how we feel about the world around us. Exactly. And the thing is, I mean, I think sometimes people go in with the ideas, OK, if I'm generous and I help other people, it's all going to work out well. But sometimes it doesn't. Right. Sometimes you can help somebody, you can give something and you know, maybe they take advantage of it or whatever happens. But it doesn't it doesn't um, reduce the fact that you did the right thing in the first place, does it? Absolutely. It doesn't because again, if you go into it for the, what was the reason why you were offering your resources? Mm -hmm. Was it because you were expecting uh, accolades? Was it because you were looking for reciprocity? You know, those are the things that you know, again, part of ego suspension is suspending your vanity. Mm -hmm. You know, we do, a lot of times we do things for the sense of vanity because we want to make ourselves look better. Um, if you're doing it for those, and I'm not, and here's the here's the tricky part too. I don't judge people that do it for those reasons either. Sure. Just realize you're going to have moments of stress when you mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. um, now you just got to make sure that the, the avenues and, and venues you're choosing to offer your resources in are in line with what compels you. Mm -hmm. Because when you actually have clarity of thought and, and brain and, and calmness, you actually have that compulsion. And everyone has, has these moments in lives where you just feel compelled. I have to do this. I feel so in, energized to do this. That's the path to walk down and offer your resources in. Now, if you are now forcing yourself to do something in this area because I think it'll make myself look good. It'll look good on my mm -hmm. resume. I guarantee you, you're going to have those negative emotions. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I couldn't agree more. And I think at the end of the day, just to wrap up here, because we're bumping up against time, I sure. think at the end of the day, there's a huge, I mean, let's not mistake, right? You want to work with companies and individuals you trust, right? So there is a huge sure. economic benefit at the end of the day to really working sure. hard to build trust with your customers, right? Absolutely. And that's why, you know, whether it's in business, personal life or, or recruiting spies, the thing you're going for trust, when you have trust, what's that beget? It begets a healthy relationship. Because here's a guarantee. If you have a healthy relationship, no one's going to screw you over mm -hmm. because we don't hurt friends because friends are aligned with our priorities. And what's everyone's priorities? Safety, security and prosperity for ourselves and our families. Yeah. So build yourself the relationships and everything falls in place. Love it. Listen, Robin, this has been fascinating, uh, fantastic interview. Um, before we go, wouldn't you tell people a little bit more about yourself, where they can find out more about you? Sure. Again, um, my name is Robin Dreek, retired FBI guy from years ago. Um, and my website is peopleformula.com. Um, lots of YouTube videos on there, keynote speeches and stuff. So if you didn't get enough death by Robin in the last bunch of minutes, you get more on there. Uh, please feel free to reach out anytime. Uh, I'm passionate about uh, how to create healthy relationships with others. Fantastic. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. Another expert inside interview, first of 2019. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.